In the last stream, we were working on fully automating our tier one power pots with both netherite and inferium seeds growing here now, being powered via this modular router, which is getting power from our tier eight solar panel, which we are finally able to craft because we managed to defeat the end dragon right at the end of the last episode. And between streams, this has been chugging along a little bit here we do have some more insanity masses and i have gone ahead and filled in every single one of these pots now and so they're all working full time to make both insanium and netherite essence over here we did set this energy condenser up to turn all of our netherite into dark matter blocks and as of right now we have almost two stacks of dark matter blocks which we can go ahead and deposit into our transmutation table here taking us up to a whopping 74.33 million EMC. Now, the plan for today, I think, is going to be to get a better source of power. Because whilst we could take these tier 8 solar panels that do have an EMC value, and we could drop them into the transmutation table, and we could use our 74 million EMC to make about 60 more of these solar panels and just throw them all down, and that would be probably enough power for at least the time being, that's not a particularly interesting way of doing things, and it's probably actually not going to be enough power to get us to the end game. Because if we look at the older modium questline here, there are three resources here that we need in order to complete the pack. Those are older modium dust, unobtainium dust, and vibranium dust. And I think each one of these is made using the energizing orb from power. We'll get to that in a future episode, but more importantly, each one requires a hundred million fe to make and that only gets you one dust and that one dust does not have an emc value the same is true for the unobtainium here it requires a bunch of creative essence and a hundred million fe and then down here the vibranium same deal a hundred million fe and a bunch of compressed diamond blocks so both a ton of emc and a ton of power to get this one online again we could also just work our way up further through the solar panels but i also think that's a little less interesting and so i was looking through the mod list to see what we could use for power generation one that a lot of people have recommended is the reactor from power if you go over here there is a power bit to the quest line and there might even be a quest line dedicated to it there is up here there are all of these reactors you can make a pretty powerful reactor from the power mod right here this uh, nitro reactor it says holds 80 million power and makes a crap load of power per second that is true but i think i might have something that's going to produce just a little bit more power and that is the rambo generator from extra utilities rebirth this is a super nifty generator in that the way it works is you place it down and in order to get it to produce power, you have to have all of the other generators from X Utilities running nearby the Rainbow Generator. So those include the Culinary Generator, the Death Generator, the Disenchantment Generator, the Ender Generator, the TNT, Frosty, Furnace, Halitosis, Netherstar, Overclocked, Pink, Potion, Slimy, Survival, Redstone, and Magma. If you get all 16 of these generators down, and if you have them all running, so they all have to be receiving their specific fuel and they all have to be generating power, if you do all of that, then the rainbow generator will begin to produce 25 million FE per tick, which is a staggering amount of FE per tick. Right now, we're producing, I think, 32,000 between these two solar panels. And so we're talking multiple orders of magnitude higher in terms of the amount of FE per tick we're gonna generate if we can get all of these online. And I think given that we have EMC available and given that most of the fuels for most of these generators are EMCable, we should be able to get all of these running and have them running consistently fairly easily. So every single one of these is made in a fairly similar way. They basically all require the standard furnace generator, which is made with a standard machine block, which it looks like does require a regular chest. We do have Quark installed, and so we do end up with this oak chest from Quark instead of a regular Minecraft chest, but you can go and just craft the Quark chests into regular chests, at which point we should then be able to craft up the machine block here. Of course, as per usual, it does have an EMC value, and so I'm gonna go ahead and just grab, let's say, a stack of those, even though, in theory, we only need uh, 16 of them. From there, we do need to turn all of those, I guess, actually into 
these furnace generators and so let's take that drop you in here and then let's make sure that we take at least 16 of those generators and now it's mostly just a case of crafting each one of these kind of one by one the best generator on this list is the nether star generator as of right now we still don't have any uh, nether stars ready to go i don't think and we still don't actually have our nether star seeds being made automatically for us we should change that but again for the time being we can take some soul sand and we can take some of the 292 wither skeleton skulls that we have here and we can get another nether star fairly quickly the only problem with this is that the nether star generator does require a constant stream of nether stars and unfortunately unlike basically everything else here the nether stars don't have an emc value so we are actually going to have to figure out a way to uh, to produce nether stars automatically at a fairly decent rate if we want to get this going most of everything else here like the redstone generator just takes redstone redstone has an emc and so we can just take emc and uh, pump it into redstone so that's gonna be fine let's head back through here though and let's see if we can't make a nether star generator we can as we make these we can uncheck them from the list as I mentioned in the last episode, my source of power does require Dragon's Breath, and that is where the Halitosis Generator comes into play. This Halitosis Generator feeds off Dragon's Breath. To make it, though, we need Purple Blocks and we need an End Rod. And so it might not be a terrible idea for us to quickly head on through to the end again and see if we can't find an End City to try and get an End Rod and a purple block we'll come back to that one though the rest of these should be fairly straightforward the magma generator does require a constant stream of lava and so we are going to have to set up a system that produces la that lava for us but that one is done the redstone generator again fairly easy stuff it actually does require the magma generator to make the redstone generator and so i am going to have to make yet another magma generator that is completely fine one more bucket of lava gets that done for us the survival generator is a super basic generator. This one just takes regular coal or wood, any kind of fuel, and produces a very small amount of power. The slimy generator is interesting. This one requires slime balls, which of course currently we don't have. We've been using coagulated blood up until this point for all of our uh, slimy needs. However, if we look at the recipe for a green slime block, we can make that in a barrel with witch water if we put a mushroom into it and as luck would have it we do have a mushroom available and so if we take that and drop it in here that gets the block of slime as per usual we can drop that in here and we can also i guess craft it down and put that in here as well just in case we fancy taking the uh, slime balls out in ball form instead of in block form for now i'll take a stack of each of those and that will get us the slimy generator take that off the list the potion generator does require blaze rods it also requires a brewing stand i believe we did put blaze rods in the transmutation table in the last episode we did indeed and so getting a brewing stand here not going to be a problem getting a potion generator also not going to be a problem the pink generator is another one that's fairly interesting here we need red dye and white dye white dye we can get from bone meal that's fine red dye we can get from beetroots if we have any which it looks like surprisingly we don't Again, that's not a problem. We can take some beets and we can just quickly sprint on here and that gets the beetroot very quickly. I'm going to put the red dye in like so just to make sure we can get more in the future without having to manually get those beets. The reason that I say the pink generator is interesting, usually the way this works is the pink generator generates power whenever you put in something pink. However, I think it's a little bit bugged in this version of the pack because from my testing let me quickly do this i will put all of the generators in here by the way to make sure we can make more than one of them but uh, for my testing when you put it down it just makes power you can see in the top left there that this thing is just generating fe with nothing in it no fuel whatsoever it just generates redstone flux that seems like a bug but it does mean that for our purposes we don't have to worry about generating anything pink we can just put it down and it just works which is pretty nifty the overclocked generator is the exact same as the survival generator but just to the extreme it uh, burns through fuel incredibly quickly but does produce more power the halitosis generator will come back to the furnace generator really straightforward it requires a regular furnace and some more iron we do need to grab some iron out of here i'll grab a few stacks of iron just to make sure we don't have to keep grabbing more and more like as we run out of it but there is the furnace generator the frosty generator requires snowballs and ice so snowballs 
We can make with a blast chiller and a ball cast. And then uh, there's also a frozen call, which I don't think we have. I always need to check because we do have quite a lot of mob drops that we've not yet seen. And then the ice here, we can make either with ice essence. We could also make it with the same blast chiller and water. I might have to get a blast chiller to make this work for the snowballs as well. We'll put that one on the back burner also for the time being. TNT is easy enough. We need TNT. And then we also need some gunpowder along with the standard furnace generator and a redstone. TNT generator is done. That one just eats TNT and produces power. The ender generator, as you might be able to guess, takes ender pearls and produces power. The disenchantment generator, another interesting one here, does require magical wood, which requires an oak bookshelf, a gold ingot, and a bottle of enchanting. The bottle of enchanting we can make in a few different ways. Do we have the XP drain? We do. And so we might have to get like a fluid encapsulator here, and then the XP drain here can be used to pull experience out of us. It basically takes some of our levels and turns it into liquid XP that we can then use to make uh, these bottles of enchanting with something like the fluid encapsulator or the dissolution chamber. Again, we'll put that one on the back burner. The death generator, super easy. This one you feed mob drops to, so bones, spider eyes, rotten flesh, gunpowder, anything like that, and it generates power. And then finally, the culinary generator here just requires food. You can feed it any kind of food and it will generate power. It does need some cooked steak. And so I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, that we have a volunteer to provide the steak. And so if we just drop that in our furnace, that should be everything for the culinary generator. It is. Nice. So what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to make sure that all of these are saved in our transmutation table. The reason for that is that in order to make the rainbow, oh, this one doesn't have any MC because it requires another star, so we're going to have to make that one again manually. But uh, in order to make the rainbow generator, you craft together the top half and the bottom half, and each half is made with eight of the 16 generators. So you basically need to get two of each generator, one to craft the rainbow generator, and one to actually be down and running. And so we're going to put this down on our lower platform here, and I think this lower platform is kind of perfect because I think we're going to do something like one, two, three, four. That is fine. And then we're going to do five, six, seven, eight. We'll do nine. That's not right. I want to have that one right in the corner next to the other generator. So there, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And then we're going to do 13 and then 14, 15, and 16. I think we did put the culinary generator down. We did indeed. And so, yeah, these three are going to go here, here, and here. And then we have a spot right in the center for the rainbow generator. Let me quickly grab just like a piece of uh, cobblestone or something to put in its place. But the uh, rainbow generator is going to go right about there. And so I think this should work pretty well. We're then going to use, I think, EMC links to automatically pull certain items from our EMC network. So we're going to start using the EMC that we're generating. And via the use of these EMC links, we're going to generate items and pull them directly down into their respective generators. So back to these last three generators. Let's start with the frosty generator here. For that, we need a blast chiller. That is this guy, a machine from thermal expansion. It actually requires ice. So you can make packed ice using the pure daisy from Batania but it doesn't look like we can make regular ice that way. JEI here does show that we can turn water into ice using the Philosopher's Stone. I don't know if this works. I feel like every time I try this, it never works. If I just right click on the water, nothing happens because you can't right click on the water. And so I don't think it, hmm. Never mind, it totally does work. If you shift right click, you can turn water into ice. And because of the fact that we got the silky upgrade, on our pickaxe in the last episode, we can actually just pick that ice up directly. And of course, we can then transmute it in our transmutation table here. And that is basically all of the ice for the frosty generator taken care of. Now it's just the case of getting those snowballs. And so I do think, if I'm not mistaken, you can make snow blocks using the pure daisy from Batania. You can. And as I mentioned a few times over the last couple of episodes, we do need to get into Batania in order to actually complete the pack. And so the beginnings of Batania here do require a petal apothecary. This is fairly straightforward. It's cobblestone with any mystical petal. We've been making mystical petals for dyes. And so if we take this, and for now we'll put it over here on our grass platform, we can then put a bucket's worth of water into that petal apothecary. 
Once again, if we right click on our Aquis accumulator, we get water, which we can then place into here. Now the pure daisy, thankfully, is a super easy flower to make. All it needs is four mystical white petals, which I'm hopeful we should have in the system here. We don't, we have three of them, but as we've seen previously, we can take those and bone meal them up with bone meal, and we can also go ahead and shear them. And in fact, in this pack, we don't even need to bone meal them because if we just run past them fast enough, I'm pretty sure they grow very quickly into the tall flowers, which we can then shear and craft back down into more mystical petals. Some of them did get collected by the petal apothecary here. If that happens, just shift right click to take them out like so. And then all we need to do is drop one, two, three, four mystical white petals in here. And you'll see next to that arrow there, it says plus seed. And so if we go and get a regular Minecraft seed and drop that in like so, we get a pure daisy. And if I'm not mistaken, what we can do here is we can take some more dirt. And if we put this pure daisy down in such a way that the water is within the eight blocks around it. And so what I mean by that is within any of these eight blocks here that are directly adjacent to the pure daisy. So if I were to break this grass, put down some dirt here and place the pure daisy there, you'll see particle effects on the water. And within the next approximately 90 seconds, we should see this water transform into a block of snow. And once we have that block of snow, we can of course break it to get snowballs and we can then EMC those snowballs to get the frosty generator. And there we go, snow block, we can harvest it. There are our snowballs and uh, we do need five. So let's do this and type in snow and we'll take a stack of those, fantastic. And that should be everything for the frosty generator. We'll add that to the lineup over here. And then next up on the list, let's see if we can't tackle the disenchantment generator. This one takes enchanted books and burns them for EMC. So the enchanting table is easy enough. And in fact, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put it down. I'm going to put a book in here and I'm going to take some lapis because we do need to have just any enchanting book to actually get this going. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. This one will do. The enchantment books do have an EMC value. And so we can do this and we're going to basically take this efficiency one uh, enchanted book and continue duplicating it to feed our disenchantment generator. Now, what we can do is we can look at getting this magical wood. So as I said before, I think what we're going to want to do here is first of all, get an XP drain. The XP drain is pretty straightforward. It requires a standard singularity tank, which is just a tank that holds 32 buckets worth of liquid. And then if we upgrade that with two eyes of ender, one hopper and some iron bars, we can set up a, uh, we can get the XP drain that is going to allow us to pull XP out of us in liquid form. So if we put that down, let's say here, and we stand on it, we'll see that our XP is actively going down at the bottom of the screen there. And in here, we now have some number of XP. We now have 1,860 millibuckets worth of XP. In order to get these bottles of enchanting, I think it might depend on which method we use. Never mind, it requires 250 millibuckets of XP to get one bottle of enchanting. And so now we just need to pick one of the methods of doing it. There is the solidification chamber, which I think might be the easiest option actually. There is in the fluid encapsulator and the dissolution chamber. The solidification chamber from Cyclic doesn't seem too difficult to make. In fact, all we're missing is a regular furnace and two blocks of lapis. As per usual, lapis is our Achilles heel. I never seem to have enough of it in the system, but there we go. There is our solidification chamber. Just on the off chance we need another one, we'll throw it in like so. Put that down. It does require some form of power. That is fine. We'll take one of our solar panels and drop it on top. I am going to admit defeat here, I think, on the jumbo furnaces. I think they're cool, but I think we're probably not going to use them going forward, simply because of the fact that the furnaces from mystical agriculture are just too fast. They're so fast. We could make upgrades for these jumbo furnaces to make them better and make them smelt 64 items at a time, but even then, I don't think that they are worth it, unfortunately. I think what I might end up doing is making this colossal chest bigger and placing it up above where these uh, jumbo furnaces currently are. I think that's what we'll do in the future. For now though, this is working. And so if we take a bucket of XP out of here and put it into the solidification chamber, we can then grab a glass bottle, which of course we don't have. 
that would be far too easy. And of course, we didn't save it last time when we had some before we went through to fight the dragon. That's fine. Let's do something like this. Make sure we save it for the future. And then if we put those in here, that should go ahead and produce for us at least one bottle of enchanting. And then we can take those and craft them with a bookshelf, which does require books, which again, I should have EMC'd. I noticed we had one earlier. Let's make sure we do that this time. We'll take a regular Minecraft book. I'm also going to take the leather actually and make sure that we transmute that as well because we don't have that many cows around and if we need more leather in the future it would be nice to have that accessible for us. Let's get at least two more regular old books. We can craft that into a regular old bookshelf and then we can EMC that a few more times to make sure that we have enough bookshelves to make the required magical wood here. And so let's do something like this. That gets us one. We do need five of these. And so uh, unfortunately, they don't have an EMC value, which means we are going to have to get a few more glass bottles out of the system. Drop those into here with a few more buckets of XP. And once we have at least five bottles, I think we should have everything we need to get the uh, five magical wood. And then that should be everything for the disenchantment generator. We'll go ahead and add it to the lineup. And so now all that we have left to do is get the halitosis generator. And then of course the rainbow generator. And I did forget, I need to actually go pick up the um, frosty and the disenchantment generator because I do need to add those to the transmutation table real quick. Let's make sure we do that before I forget. Boom. And Oh, this one doesn't have any EMC value. Again, unfortunately, we are going to have to craft that again just because the magical wood doesn't have an EMC value. But to be fair, it wasn't too difficult to craft. So the halitosis generator, we need purple blocks and we need an end rod. Both of these are makeable with end essence, but I think for end seeds, we need end agglomeratio, which does require kind of the things that we're after, chorus fruit and purple blocks. And so instead, what I think we'll do is we'll take some ender pearls, we'll head back through to the end and we'll just quickly see if we can't find an end city if we can it shouldn't take us two seconds to get enough chorus fruit to make the purple blocks and if we can find an end city we can just fly around until we see an end rod at which point we should just be able to harvest it i have been told that isaac's forgotten dragon loot thank you i uh people did mention that i forgot to pick this up at the end of the last episode uh, somebody on the server has uh, very graciously uh, built this little setup for me and has placed the um the stuff that I left in this chest here. So thank you very much for that. I do appreciate it. Over here, let's quickly throw an ender pearl through one of these portals. And hopefully that is going to put us somewhere near an end city. I really thought that was a chorus through that. I should have known that it wasn't because of the fact that it was only one. But uh, if we just kind of fly off in one direction for a little bit, I'm fairly certain we'll find an end city sooner rather than later. All right, so not too long later, I have managed to find an end city. That really didn't take too, too long. And so grabbing, of course, an end rod here is, uh, is not a problem. There's tons of them around this end city. It looks like the harder part, though, might be finding chorus fruit because I'm being told by the Twitch chat that the chorus fruit just doesn't exist here in the end. And uh, there are these little chorus guys, but it looks like they don't drop the chorus fruit either, which is unfortunate. But we'll take a look and we'll see if we can't find something. Actually, never mind. The whole reason we need the chorus fruit is to get these five purple blocks. And, of course, right here are the purple blocks. And so if we just take at least one or two of those, you know, we might as well take a few of them, actually, while we're here. That should be everything that we need. And I don't think there's much here that we really want. But uh, we can do a quick slash home. And we should now be able to craft up the halitosis generator. So let's make sure that we do this and we also do this to make sure we can craft those in the future and boom the halitosis generator is done and so now i think we're basically good to go so let's go ahead and see if we can't get another one of each generator here we can get almost all of them directly from our transmutation table the only two that we're not going to be able to get are the nether star generator and the disenchantment generator everything else we should be able to get. Once again, the nether star generator is the easier of the two. We just need one more nether star. So let's once again, get four more soul sand out of here and go spawn another wither. And boom, there is the nether star generator. 
And as for the disenchantment generator again, that is this guy right here, we just need five more magical wood, which of course requires yet more of these glass bottles. Actually, I think we have, yeah, a ton of them in here, and we've already got 14 more ready to go as well. So let's just put those there, grab two, three, four, and five. That should be everything to make this just as soon, of course, as we grab one more book for one more enchanting table. And once we've done that, it's then a case of actually getting all of these generators producing power. Once that's done, we should be good to go. So let's do this. And then now to make the two halves, we do need two redstone crystals. And the redstone crystals here are made with four redstone and an ender shard. The ender shard is made by crafting an ender pearl with a glass cutter, which is just a stick and some iron then we can do something like this get six ender shards and then craft up two of these redstone crystals and with that we should have everything we need to craft the top half and the bottom half of the rainbow generator it looks like the only thing we're missing is the pink generator did i not put oh no i definitely did put it in here i think it was the first one that i put in boom and boom and then if we craft both of these together we get the actual rainbow generator which we can go ahead and place down in place of our gravel here and so now when all of these are online this should start generating 25 million redstone flux per tick so as i mentioned before if we're going to get a lot of these online it's mostly a case of getting emc links so the first tier of EMC link here is made with an energy condenser, some covalence dust, and two transmutation tablets. So we did look before at getting the transmutation tablet, but we didn't get it because at the time, we didn't have the EMC to get it. Now, if we go back down to our energy condenser here, we have got, again, almost uh, two and a half stacks of dark matter. And so if we bring that back up and I guess put it in the transmutation table that we just picked up, we, uh, we now have a lot more EMC and uh, actually, I, could, I should have kept four of those because we need them to craft the next tier here. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily take this energy condenser and I'm going to use it just to teach our transmutation table here how to make energy condensers. That way we can put this one back down and we can craft another one for use in the making of this EMC link. So let's take this away. And let's take a third block of dark matter. Well, then temporarily i guess throw this back down to get that one last block of dark matter at which point i think we now have everything to make our first transmutation tablet and now that we don't have the transmutation table we could make another one but oh no we can make another one fairly easily right yeah nice okay cool um let's take that let's do this let's take a second one of these and then let's take a third one of these and then let's go ahead break this basically now that we have the transmutation tablet we can just right click it in our inventory and no matter where we are we can access the transmutation table which is pretty nifty and so now back over here if we once again go emc link i think we have everything we need to make the tier one emc link we do nice and of course we can place that in like so and now we can take a few of these i was going to say as many as we like but that's not strictly true because they are quite expensive they do require almost 5 million emc per emc link and so now that we have this we can now look at uh setting all of this up so i think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab ourselves some more modular routers just because we can so the uh, the modular routers we did make them last time and uh, we can put one of these basically on top of every single generator here the um one of the nifty things about the modular routers that i didn't get to show off last time is that uh, you can put a camouflage upgrade into these to make them look like anything that you want and so if we uh, quickly go and take a look at the camouflage upgrade i actually don't know if we can make it but camouflage this one here is pretty straightforward we need another blank upgrade which i think we can get from here we totally can and then it looks like we need green dye and blue dye blue dye easy enough it's just uh, lapis red dye of course we have in here and then green dye if we have a mystical green flower which we totally do we can take that and then craft that with a pestle and mortar to get the green dye which we can of course add to our list of emc items and boom we get a camouflage upgrade and the way this works is i believe do we take the camouflage upgrade and right click it shift right click it we do and so if you shift right click it on something like the uh, supreme furnace here you can then put that into 
the router and the router will look like a Supremium furnace, but it gets better because I think you can do it on almost anything. If I shift right click on, oh, it's not gonna work on that, but that's fine. Um, if I shift right click on, let's say, I don't know, the absorption hopper here, and we go and put that in here, it looks like an absorption hopper. And so I think these necessarily don't look that nice on their own, but if we find a cool block to uh, to make to mimic and uh, and use in place of the modular routers, we can then still use the modular routers to move all of the uh, the items down from the EMC links. So the EMC links are going to go on top of the modular routers like so. And basically, the way that these EMC links work is that you specify an item that you want them to generate. Let's say that we want to use the slimy generator as an example. If we go and grab a slime ball, which we can actually do out of our transmutation tablet here, we can then right click the slime ball onto the EMC link, like so. And now this is set to produce slime balls. And so if we hover over the EMC link, you'll see that it can import or export one item per second. And so basically once per second, we can extract a slime ball from this EMC link and it will take the cost of a slime ball, which is 32 EMC from our total EMC, which is up there in the top left-hand corner, we've got 3.19 million. So if we were to once again, grab some sender and puller upgrades, I think if you right click, you can configure these all at once. So if we right click the sender and click down and we right click the puller and click up, we can then use that in all of these because they're all going to be configured the same. But now if we put one of each of these into the router, it should begin pulling slime balls out of here at a rate of one per second and putting them into the limey generator at a rate of one per second, which it is. And as it turns out, the slimy generator uses less than one slime ball per second. And so it's never going to run out of slime balls and everything is good. And so now we basically need to do the same thing for everything else here. Can I shift right click these in? I cannot. That would have made life far too easy. But let's go ahead and put one of each of these puller and sender modules into each one of these modular routers. And then let's configure all of the EMC links that can be configured to generate their respective EMC. So things like, again, the nether star generator that we have here. I've put an EMC link there, but you can't actually generate nether stars using EMC. And so we're not going to be able to make that work. But Basically everything else here can be EMC'd, which is uh, is real nice. Okay, so all of these are now configured with the sender and puller modules. And what we could have done here, of course, is we could have used the, uh, the item pipes from pipes, which are probably easier to work with. To make these, you just need some uh, conveyor belts, which uh, we do need leather for. Thankfully, we did teach our system how to make leather just a moment ago. And someone in the Twitch chat suggested something that I quite like the idea of, and that is using the item pipes as the basis for the camouflage. It's gonna look real weird because it's not gonna connect, but if we do this and this, we uh, we have an item pipe there, but it's not an item pipe. It's a more advanced item pipe in the form of this modular router. Let me go ahead and grab that uh, camouflage upgrade and let me uh, EMC that real quick like this. And then much like with the other upgrades, I'm pretty sure that if we take a stack of those and right click all of them onto an item pipe, that they're all gonna get configured at once. So if I do this and this, I can then go ahead and just put one of these into every upgrade slot and these are all gonna look like item pipes. Even better, somebody in the Twitch chat has pointed out here that uh, if you, I put down two chests like this and now the pipe connects. And so now it's copying the pipe as it connects. I think we could take that one step further actually. And if we uh, really wanna commit to the bit here, if we get a pipe wrench, and we set the top pipe there to extract like that, we could then copy that. And if we go ahead and let's say replace this camouflage module with this one, that, oh, it doesn't do the, the copying. It doesn't copy the pulling, unfortunately. That would have been nifty, but it still does uh, actually look like it's connecting now. And so I'm just gonna quickly replace these camouflage upgrades here. I might not keep this forever. If we find something better to, uh, to replace these with, we can always do that. But I do kind of like the idea of, uh, of using these modular routers, but making them look like item pipes. All right, so these are all down and connected now, which is fantastic. So as I mentioned before, the pink generator just works, so we don't have to bother with that. Uh, the potion generator we'll come back to because we are gonna have to get a potion for that to work, much like we got an enchantment book for the disenchanting generator. Over here, I think wood will work just fine for the survival generator, it does indeed. Then snow, I'm pretty sure works for the frosty generator. We're looking in the top left here to see if power 
starts being generated. Uh, for some reason, there's a camouflage upgrade in there. Let me take that out. And that does indeed work. Fantastic. We can put that away. Over here, the disenchantment generator just requires the enchanted book that we made earlier. We'll put that on like so, and that should start generating power. It does fantastic. Then we have the halitosis generator. That needs the dragon's breath, which has a laughably low two EMC value. I'm not quite sure why that's so cheap, but that should generate power. It does indeed. The culinary generator, we can use anything, but we do have bread, and so we might as well go ahead and drop some bread in there, give it a second use. Then the death generator, usually in older versions of extra utilities 2 this would kill you if you were near it while it was running i am not actually sure if that is how it works in this version of the pack so we'll go with maybe rotten flesh here we do need to make sure that we have rotten flesh in our tablet if uh, if you've not learned something in the tablet then the emc link won't be able to use it but now if i do this that should start generating power it does and it looks like in this remake of extra utilities the death generator unfortunately doesn't uh, actually kill you which is good for us but is uh, less thematic i will admit ender pearls going the ender generator like so and then we've got the tnt generator which again i think used to like explode every time that uh, it took a piece of tnt again i have a feeling that's probably not going to work but if we uh, go ahead and add tnt to our transmutation table or tablet in this case we can then go and drop that in over here that should start making power it does indeed, fantastic. Then we've got the furnace generator, which again can just use wooden planks, that is fine. We've then got the overclock generator, which could in theory also run off planks, but it burns things a lot faster, and so I'm actually gonna go ahead and get like a block of coal for that, just because we do have to bear in mind that our EMC links can only produce one item per second. And so if we put in something like wooden planks, and if the generator here required more than one wooden plank per second, then the system wouldn't work. So instead I'm gonna go ahead and just right click a block of coal on there and put the block of coal in there and that should start generating blocks of coal which should be able to keep up with the speed of the overclocked generator the redstone generator as the name suggests just requires redstone uh, preferably in dust form although i think it would accept it in either form if i'm not mistaken but uh, let's do that and then over here are the two generators that don't work with emc we have the lava generator or the magma generator and the nether star generator all of the rest of these uh, apart from the potion generator i guess are online the potion generator is emcable if we get a brewing stand like so we can then get a bottle which we have over here uh, if we go ahead and fill that up with some water which we can do over here i think we can just pop this down give it the bottle of water and then if we put in let's say some blaze powder and just some nether wart do we have any nether wart we do we only have one nether wart so i'm going to make sure that i uh, drop that in here first but uh, if we do this and this that should make us just a standard awkward potion which we should then be able to just place into the transmutation tablet and then pull out from the emc link and that should be basically an infinite amount of potion that we can then use for power there we go fantastic let's take that let's add it to the tablet good stuff uh, let's get rid of the search there we don't need that e in the top and then let's go and right click this over on here and we should start to see this generating power nice so over here we have the nether star generator and the magma generator the nether stars do last a long time in here and so we don't need to make that many of them but we're probably going to want to get some nether star seeds automated with our power pots as for the magma generator we need to generate an infinite amount of lava there are actually quite a few ways to do this uh, there's the melting chamber from cyclic there is the magma crucible from thermal expansion there is the laser drill for fluids from industrial foregoing and there's the fired crucible from ex nihilo i think the magma crucible might be our best bet here although actually i think someone did mention the volcanite amulet which acts as an infinitely full lava bucket and so right click to fill tanks we might be able to make that actually let me quickly see if this works we do need uh, three dark matter which we can get and we need six buckets of lava this is i don't know why the search bar is here it's not the search bar i want i want um this search bar underneath lava there we go give me six buckets there we are going to need to clear out a little bit of inventory space because we've got so much junk filling up our uh, trunk at the moment but let me get a few more buckets of lava here and let's put all of those in like that that gets us the vulcanite amulet and i think if i'm not mistaken if we put that into a mechanism 
tank. So one of these tanks here, that might just generate infinite lava. So if I put this down, let's say right about here, and I put, actually, you know, we might as well, like, it's going to look less good, but I might, we might as well put it up here, right? Just so it looks a bit more symmetrical. Get rid of that. Get rid of this modular router that is actually looking like an item pipe. And then if we put the Vulcanite amulet into here, yeah, so that, that works. Like, we can shift right click it to get lava. But annoyingly, unlike, there's another amulet that you can make called the Evertide amulet. This one here, you can uh, you can place into a tank and it will just produce water. Unfortunately, this one has a cost. It costs 32 EMC to generate a bucket of lava. And so I don't think that we can put this in here. What we could potentially do, though, is maybe use like an item user here from Cyclic because we do have the ability to make an infinite. Really, we don't have any fully uh, usable bows. That kind of makes sense. I imagine most of the bows in our system are kind of broken. But um, we do have the ability to EMC buckets automatically. And so I think it's quite possible that we could take buckets out of our transmutation tablet, use those buckets with the item clicker onto a tank to get the lava into, you know, the actual tank itself. And then we could extract from there down into the, uh, the magmatic dynamo. So do we have obsidian? We should have. I guess I've not taught it yet. That's fine. Let me make sure that I do grab some of the obsidian out of here, the two that we have left. I really thought we taught this in the past, but I guess I might have done it on the energy condenser, actually, not on the transmutation tablet. And then finally, we also need a magma block, which we also don't have, but we can now make because blaze we don't have, but we can get, and slime we can just EMC. So let's do something like this, get uh, one, two, three, four of those, and of course craft that into a magma block, which we can then craft into an item user. And so let's see if we can't put this down. If I place the item user above the tank here so that we're going to have a fluid pipe let's say here then we're going to have our tank up above that like so and then i want the item user above that and so to try and get that to go down the right way what i'm going to do is i'm going to break this block here and if i place this down like that does that point down i think it does only one way to find out though and that's to put a bucket of lava into there if i take a bucket of lava out of our transmutation tablet, and I put that into this guy. Uh, we're gonna set this to tick delay 20 is fine, that's one second. Uh, requires redstone, always on is what we want. And ideally, oh, it needs power as well. Interesting, okay. That could be tricky. It's gonna be fine once we get power up and running, but for the time being, we actually don't have power that's not in the form of a solar panel. And so we're probably gonna have to just go ahead and steal one of these solar panels and temporarily live with them. Um, this hole in the floor like this that does work though so it does keep taking it out but that's fine because what we can probably do then is take our emc link and if we take this modular router as well i think we can make some stuff happen here let's do this which looks like a pipe now but the wrong way around and this so i think what we should be able to do is put in another set of item pullers and item senders maybe if i get another set of modules here we can have one of them filtered to pull the lava bucket out of the emc link and we can have another one filtered to pull the iron bucket out of here and send it into here so what we're going to do the ones that are already in here we'll take these two out and we're going to set the puller module here to pull buckets of lava so we'll say pull buckets of lava whitelist that is fine i'll do it on the sender module as well i don't think we need to but we'll say whitelist full buckets of lava i'll we'll put both of those back in there that's going to pull lava from here, send it into there as soon as we do that. And that should send it over. Right? Oh, no, we need to reconfigure this, of course, because now uh, I'm going to take the camouflage upgrade out so we can see which way this is facing. But now our modular router is actually placed down in a different orientation to how it was before. So let me do this. And then we want to set the puller to right and the sender to left like that. So I'll put puller in there, sender in there. That is going to send that over. Perfect. Then we want to have the other puller and the other sender. This time, this puller is going to pull from the left, and the sender is going to send it to the right. Uh, but this time, what we want to do is we want to take an empty bucket of nothingness, and we want to say puller is going to pull that whitelist, and sender is going to send that whitelist. And so the only potential issue now is if we don't have the speed to make that happen. 
How are we doing in here? We've got three buckets, four buckets, three buckets, four buckets. Okay, so let's go grab some speed upgrades because I think right now the clicker is working faster than the modular router. And so if we do something like this, four, three, four, three. Hold on, did I do this right? Puller is pulling from the left and sender is sending to the right. Oh, it is true that the buffer in the module is full. I don't know if we can increase the number of slots in the buffer here, because it is correct that this modular router is currently full on lava. What we could do, it would look worse and definitely be worse, but if we wanted to, we could just put another modular router down like this, take the speed upgrades out, put the speed upgrades in that one, take these two out, change the puller to right, change the sender to left, and then put down another EM ceiling because you can also pump items into the EM ceiling like this. And now, uh, if we go and take the uh, the bucket here and uh, do that, I guess, that's going to take the buckets and turn them back into EMC. So we take out a bucket of lava, which costs 832 EMC, and then we take the lava out and we put the uh, bucket of iron back into the network at a cost of 768 EMC. But this is working. Let's get rid of this and let's go and grab a fluid pipe, which we should have. We got some fluid pipes earlier in the playthrough. We'll take those out. We'll take our wrench. We'll figure out how we're going to camouflage these uh, two in the future. But if we do this and this, that should come online. It does. So we do need the nether stars. We'll come back to those in a second. The final thing we need to do to actually get this to work is we need to get a wrench from Extra Utilities Rebirth. Easy enough. It does require a red die. Let's grab that from here and let's do something like this and then all we have to do is shift right click on the rainbow generator like so and then you just go and right click on each one of the other generators and you'll see in the chat there that it's telling me that each one of these is binded to the generator nice so i think that's all of them bound Right now, it says one out of 16 missing generators. Basically, what that means is that right now, we're missing 15 generators and one of them is working. The one that is working is the magma generator because the rest of these are not making power. They're all full of power, but they actively need to be making power if we want the rainbow generator to work. So now, to do that, what we can do is we could try and use the power, but I think in the grand scheme of things, we could also just get some energy trash cans. These are just going to delete the energy made by all of the other generators, which might seem wasteful, but the amount of power being generated by the other generators is at most a few thousand redstone flux per tank compared to the 25 million FE per tank that we generate from the rainbow generator. It's not even a drop in the bucket. So if I put that down, you'll see that now in the top left there, this has zero FE in it. And if we right click, it says two out of 16, which means we have both the magma generator and the frosty generator online. If we go ahead and delete all of the other power that is being generated by all of this stuff. We don't need to get into Flux Networks just yet. We don't need this power. <laughs> now, we've got 12 out of 16 generators. We're missing four. The Furnace Generator, the Nether Star Generator, the Overclock Generator, and the Redstone Generator. So, I did notice in my testing, some of these are a little bit funky. You'll notice that most of these are out of power, like they're fully empty. Some of them, though, are not. And I'm not quite sure why, but in my testing, if I just move this to the side, that works. Now that's empty. If we move this one to the side, it might just be a misconfiguration on the mods end or something, but that works. And if I put it there, that also works. So for some reason, no idea why some of these can't output power, at least not automatically to the bank. Now it's just the nether star generator. And so if I were to go and get a nether star, which obviously this is not an automated solution by any stretch of the imagination, us manually getting a nether star. But uh, if we were to get a, a nether star manually, the nether stars do actually last a fairly long time. And so even with just one nether star, we should be able to uh, to get a few million, uh, hundreds of millions of FE because 25 million FE per tick is, you know, a ton of EMC. It's 25 million EMC 20 times per second or 20 ticks per second in Minecraft. So we're talking about hundreds of millions of EMC in total. So any second now, we'll get our umpteenth nether star. Fantastic. Let's go and put that into the nether star generator. 
over here, there is deleting power. And here, if I right click, it says the rainbow generator is running and it's generating 25 million FE per tick. Unfortunately, unlike previous versions of the pack, we don't get the cool animation, but in the top left there, you can see that this is currently holding 100 million FE. And so the thing that we need to work on in the next episode chat is utilizing this power because right now 25 million FE is a lot of FE to be making per tick, but it's currently not going anywhere. It's not doing anything. And so next time we'll come back, we'll look at getting some higher tier power pots, I think, because we want to get a higher tier power pot potentially for our nether stars. We want to be able to grow the nether star seeds and automatically send them down to the nether star generator because I don't want to have to keep making them forever. But this is still going, right? This would be making, you know, so much power. What is 25 multiplied by 20? 500. So this makes 500 million EMC per second, which is just a staggering amount of EMC. That's a billion EMC every two seconds. And so next time we'll come back and we'll set up a system to actually store that kind of power. And we'll also look at utilizing uh, some other modes to move that power around wirelessly to uh, things like our power pots. Once we have that, we can then look at upgrading these power pots because power hopefully won't be an issue for us. And with that, we can then push forward into some of the later game content. But all of those are problems for future Isaac because for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Mystical Block.